Hello my beautiful friends, my name is Alexandria and tonight I'm going to be sitting down to film my monthly wrap up. I'm going to be talking about all the books that I read in the month of May, um, specifically all the books that I read for the Asian Readathon. I am so proud of all of the books that I ended up getting to and really happy with a lot of the new authors that I found that I'm excited about. If you can't tell, I am recovering from a sickness that my child so kindly gave to me. Um, and so I sound very congested, so just bear with me throughout this video, but I am so excited to talk about all the books that I read this month. And yeah, so if you'd like to see me chat about all of these books, then just keep on watching. Like I said, I'm very proud of the amount of books that I got to this month. I made my TBR very vast and very diverse. I am definitely a mood reader and I wanted to have a large range of genres and styles of books and lengths of books um, that I would be able to just pick up depending on whatever my mood was and it worked out stupendously. So I ended up reading 14 books last month. Obviously I didn't get to all the books that I had in my TBR from last month because there was a lot that I had in there, but I got to a lot of the really good ones that I was excited about reading. And so without further ado, I will go ahead and just start talking about them. Chalking, chalking. I will start talking about them. I will just go ahead and get into my thoughts on all the books. So from last month, I did roll over two of the books that I had been reading. Um, and so I'm just gonna talk about those first. Those were not written by Asian authors. Um, the first one was Golden Sun. This was the second book in the Red Rising trilogy. Oh my god. If you didn't hear me talking and raving about this series last month, you should probably check out that video. I'll put the link to it somewhere on the screen. But this is one of my favorite sci-fi series, just like one of my favorite series in general. I don't know what Pierce Brown does with his writing, but it just like touches my soul. This is following our main character Darrow. He is um, basically the society is like a caste system and he is of the lowest caste which are reds. He works in the mines in Mars and basically they are essentially uh, slaves to the highest caste which is the golds. They think that they're kind of working for the greater good of society and making a difference, making an impact, but come to find out things aren't as they seem. And so he kind of goes on this journey to change himself and evolve in order to be able to infiltrate the golds and tear them down from the inside. Um, and so that's really what the focus is of the entire series. The first book um, is kind of him getting into that space um, and all of the stuff that happens in that space. And one thing that I realized when I was reading the first book was that I really like reading about war. And I remember the same thought coming up when I was reading A Song of Achilles. I really, really enjoy war sequences in books. Um, I actually really enjoy them like in movies. Like I'm thinking of the war, the like infamous war scene in A uh, Game of Thrones. Absolutely loved it. That's something that I really, really liked about the second book because it pretty much started right out of the gate with a war sequence, a space war sequence. And I didn't know that that was exactly what I needed. I gave this book five out of five stars, if you couldn't tell. I honestly felt like this was the perfect, the perfect setup for a second book in a series. Um, I know that second books in series can fall into kind of like a tough space because it can feel kind of like a filler book in between the first and the last book. But this one felt like the most perfect standalone, like, second book in a series that I've possibly ever read and I feel like every time I read more and more about Darrow I just fall in love with him even more. Emotional turmoil that he goes through throughout this book that is so... it's a lot. One thing that I did notice about the first book was that it kind of fell into the wave from uh, Ready Player One where it kind of fell into this trope of like oh, this guy, he doesn't know how to do something and then he does it and practices for a while and then he's like perfect at it and he's amazing, kind of like the golden child, <laughs> the golden son. But in this book, I felt like that trope kind of fell off and you definitely saw him fail a lot, like real quick. 
and um, it was intense. It was a lot. I am not saying too much about the plot because it is the second book, but holy shit, I was shook when the plot twist happened. I was kind of expecting it, but I also wasn't expecting it at the same time, so there's that. I hate how my body shivers at the idea of glory. There's something deep in man that hungers for this but I think it weakness, not strength, to abandon decency for that strange, darker spirit. And I feel like that like fully encompasses the like, the struggle that Darrow was having throughout this book was wanting, like he felt, he was feeling all very disconnected from being a red, I feel like in this book. And he kind of had to remind himself of why he was doing what he was doing. Um, because he was starting to like empathize with golds, um, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but he also didn't want to lose his reasoning and his why. And there's so much that happens in this story that like, it's understandable why that happened. But yes, that is how much I absolutely love this book. As you can probably tell, I am very excited to read the next one. So the next book that I read was the last book in the Broken Earth trilogy. This was called The Stone Sky by N.K. Jemisin. So this is basically following our main character who is on a journey to figure out herself and also maybe save the world in the process. Um, if you don't know anything about the series, I've talked about it in a lot of different videos. But long story short, it is basically a world where instead of four seasons, there are five seasons and the fifth season is kind of a catastrophic uh, natural disaster that happens. The society has kind of adapted to living in this world in the aftermath of these disasters and also we have these people called origins who can kind of control the tectonic plates um, so control parts of the earth are very connected with the earth but unfortunately they are treated terribly but yeah i'm not gonna get too much into the plot because i'm trying to make this not super long um, but as far as my thoughts on the last book in the series, I did listen to this in tandem on audiobook and then I also read it as an ebook as well. Um, and maybe that did have an effect on my experience reading it. Maybe I would have liked it a little bit better if I had just read it the whole time um, because that's the format that I read the first two books. But I feel like there was just something missing from it and what I realized was missing was just the level of like intrigue and like the level of mystery because obviously it's the last book so all of the questions were getting answered all of the you know ends were not loose what the ends were being tied the loose ends were I don't know what I'm trying to say yeah I just felt like the level of like mystery was gone obviously and I think that was a big reason why I really enjoyed the other books because there was just this like looming feeling of like what is going on I don't understand and then all of a sudden I did understand and I was like <sighs> I was just a little bit bored um, maybe it was the narrator of the audiobook I don't know I am going to reread the series not like soon soon but eventually i definitely will reread the series um and i'm definitely gonna buy the series as well because i just want to have it in my collection because it is one of the most incredible science fiction series that i have read this one just didn't 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 hit that spot for me the way the first two books did. Moving on, so the first book that I read for the Asian Readathon, I am still, okay, it's nine o'clock at night. I don't really know which books I ended up reading for which prompts. I just read all of these for the Asian Readathon um, and tried to hit all the prompts. I'm pretty sure that I did. Let's just say that I did. I think, I am pretty, I think I did. I, I think I did. Let's just give me the win, please. I need something. The first book that I read was by Jin Jenny Lin, um, and this was Butterfly Swords. This is the first book in the Tang Dynasty series. Sorry, I'm looking at my phone. Um, I gave this 3.75 stars. So this is following our main character, whose name is Ailee. She is a princess, and basically in the first scene, she is fleeing from her wedding or her impending wedding that is going to be happening. All she has on her are her delicate butterfly swords and she ends up running into this man whose name is Ryan and of course romance ensues. This was very straightforward. This was very uh, predictable. 
Um, there were some twists and turns that I did enjoy. I've come to find out that I really do enjoy historical romances, um, and yeah, I really like this, and I'm definitely going to read more in the series. I don't think it follows the same characters in the series, um, but the smut was great, so. All right, so the next book was a book that I was really excited to read, and I thoroughly enjoyed every moment of reading this book. This is by Kazuo Ishiguro, and that was Never Let Me Go. I'm actually reading another one of this author's books right now, and I'm thoroughly enjoying it as well, I'm reading Clara and the Sun. Never Let Me Go it was actually a movie that I really enjoyed um, in the past. I did end up watching the movie after I read the book, and let's just say, I was not a fan, despite the fact that my girls, Carrie Mulligan and Kira Knightley were in it, and it was absolutely beautiful. I was not a fan because in comparison to the book, it just was not the same. So this is actually a science fiction book, which I did not realize. Would you call this speculative? Which I didn't realize until I got more into the book because I didn't remember what happened from when I had watched the movie a while ago. This is basically following a girl whose name is Kathy and her relationships with um, a girl whose name is Ruth and a boy whose name is Tommy. They all live in this um, kind of boarding school type of situation. Um, they're very cut off from the outside world, but they have really happy lives. Why does it sound like I'm describing The Promised Neverland? I'm thinking maybe whoever wrote The Promised Neverland kind of drew some inspiration from that, but you know, you never know. Nothing is really original at this point. I absolutely love Ishiguro's writing. It was so beautiful. It was beautiful in a way that wasn't pretentious to me, and it was beautiful in a way that didn't feel like super over my head to where I'd like have to reread it over and over, but there's other things going on and that's kind of like what I really enjoyed about it as well was that there was like this lingering undertone of like something is not quite right and then when you find out what is not quite right about what's going on it feels even more unsettling because it kind of feels like something that could possibly happen in the near future and that I think that's what's really scary about a lot of different like science fiction novels to me is that <laughs> if it's something that could possibly happen in the near future. I guess maybe that's the point of science fiction. So I just wanted to hop on here real quick to say something that I forgot to mention while I was reviewing Never Let Me Go. Um, and this might be a little bit of a spoiler, so if you wanna fast forward to the next book, um, I'll try to put a timestamp. One thing that I really enjoyed was this discussion of kind of the like ethics behind um, different forms of humanity I guess or different forms of beings that are conscious sentient being this discussion of whether it is moral and ethical to basically assert our authority assert our power over these beings because of the fact that we created them is a discussion that has come up in many different places uh it's a discussion that i have personally thought about when it comes to having children because a lot of people have the mindset that you know you have children and so because you created created this being that means that to some extent you have full control over them and they should you know bend to your will is just about whoever is the most powerful. So if you are against like animal cruelty or say if you're vegan, if you're against eating animals or any kind of harm being done to animals, um, the discussion that often comes up is like, is it ethically okay for me to do whatever I want with this living being um, because of the fact that I'm more intelligent than them? But even then, intelligence is subjective, so that's not even an accurate tool to like measure like whether something is morally or ethically okay to do or not. In this school, in this world, they've been able to create clones so that they can um, have these donors and be able to um, kind of save people's lives essentially. The fact that people kind of want to turn a blind eye and, and, and not 
acknowledge their humanity in order to continue doing the positive things that they have been doing. In the name of progression, what are we willing to continue doing? What are we willing to turn a blind eye to? Just going to continue doing what we have been doing because that's what's been working despite the fact that there is evidence that these beings are sentient and that they actually want to live and they actually have they're human beings they have human tendencies they're just like us and we wouldn't be able to differentiate ourselves from these people and that's scary a lot of times because then uh, one thing that was talked about is the discussion that comes up is like what if they're more powerful than you what if they're smarter than you are they going to take over the response is to assert your authority, assert your power, and remind them of their place in this society. So that was a huge part of this book that I definitely wanted to mention um, that really stuck out to me and made me think. I didn't like the movie because it was very different from the book, and I hate to be one of those people that's like, I didn't, I like the book better than the movie. I feel like the overall tone of the movie was completely different from the book, and like, that's fine but I felt like they were also kind of trying to stay true to the book as well, but like they changed certain things that like vastly changed the way that you saw certain characters. And I don't know, I just wasn't a fan. I gave that like two out of five stars. I don't even know what I would give that movie, um, but the book was definitely five out of five stars for me and I am excited to read more by this author. The next book that I read was a romance novel. This was The Trouble with Hating You by Sajni Patel. I gave this three out of five stars. You have no idea how much I wanted to DNF this book. You have no idea. I had done a little photo shoot with it because it matched my outfit and I just felt, <laughs> I just felt morally obligated to finish it. Maybe I just haven't read the right ones, but I don't think that I like enemies to lovers or like hate to love romance novels, which is fine. Basically, this is following our main character whose name is Laya Fakar, and she is a very successful biochemical engineer, which is great. We love to see it. Basically, it starts out with her being at her family's home and her parents are very much wanting her to get married and live a very traditional lifestyle um, and she is not wanting to do that. She goes over there for dinner and realizes that her parents basically set her up on like a blind date and invited this guy and his mother over for dinner. She ends up trying to get away, runs into him in the process of leaving. And then he basically hates her for skipping out on this dinner. And I just, I can't stand misunderstandings, like the whole misunderstanding trope, like miscommunication, like just, you're adults, just talk, please. It's like one thing if you're like teenagers and like something like this happens, but like if you're adults, I'm like fucking text exactly what happened what you mean and it'll be fine <laughs> one thing that was also really challenging to get through when it came to the book just like technically um was that it felt like it needed to be edited a little bit it felt a little bit like their conversations uh would sometimes feel like a monologue but once i pushed past like the first half i was able to connect with the characters a little bit more and so that was nice I was able to get past the kind of monologue, unrealistic conversation style. My biggest bone to pick with this was that this was supposed to be an adult romance novel, right? It had a fade to black sex scene. And I'm like, you couldn't, you couldn't just give me that. You couldn't have just given me that. Just that one thing, that's all I wanted. I was waiting for so long, like the buildup, the buildup was there. The piney, it was there. And then nothing, nothing. I was, I was pissed, I was, I was so angry. If you were fine with fade to black um, romance novels, you like enemies to lovers or hate to love, I'm not sure which one. You like uh, seeing different representation of cultures in books. I did like being able to see those different like traditions and stuff throughout the book. Another thing that I do wanna say is that there are trigger warnings for 
um, sexual assault, also victim blaming and like a victim not be not being believed. Um, that also really pissed me off. There just weren't a lot of like redeeming qualities in this book. And so, yeah, I think I'd probably knock it down to three stars. All right, so the next book that I read is going to be very quick for me to get through. Um, this is Spy Family Volume 1. Um, this is basically following a spy who has to do a mission, and in order to follow through with that mission, he has to obtain a family, which is like a mission within a mission. Missionception. He ends up marrying this woman who actually is an assassin, which he doesn't know. She does not know that he's a spy. They adopt a little girl who is telepathic, but they also don't know that she's telepathic. The little girl knows that the mom is the assassin and the dad is a spy, but none of them know what is going on in anybody's lives. It is absolutely hilarious. It's super cute. It's super heartwarming. And I am so excited to read more of it. I read this on the Shonen Jump app. And yeah, like I said, I'm excited to read more of this and just to see what kind of shenanigans they get into because the first volume had a lot packed into it. And so, yeah, I'm excited to see more. The next book that I read was Girls of Paper and Fire by Natasha Nyan. I believe that's how you pronounce her name. Um, this book is the first in a trilogy, I believe. I know the second book is out and I think the third book is coming out sometime this year. This is following our main character whose name is Lei and she lives in a society that has caste, a caste system. And she is in the lowest of castes. Um, which is called the paper cast. Um, her mother was taken by the royal guards um, previously, and then she ends up being taken by the royal guards to be a part of these group of elite girls, I guess, called the paper girls. Um, it's eight girls that are chosen by the king to basically be his concubines. And um, it was, it was challenging to read that at times because all the girls, most of them, were underage. Um, I'm not really sure how relevant that is to the world that they were in, but that is something that made me a little bit uncomfy. She really, 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 really didn't want to do what she had to do um, in order to be a paper girl, and it just felt really gross and uncomfortable and... Um, yeah, there was definitely a lot of ugh, lack of consent that was happening, and yeah, it just, that part was just real icky. Um, and so if that's something that makes you uncomfortable, definitely keep that in mind, and I think you would probably want to skip this series. I do think that I'm going to continue on with the series. I kind of want to see what happens um, with the relationship between the two girls. The next book that I read was Ace um, by Angela Chin. This is Ace, What Asexuality Reveals About Desire, Society, and the Meaning of Sex. Um, I actually did film this video earlier. I really liked the way that I described it earlier, so I'm just going to go ahead and insert that clip here um, to avoid, you know, just repeating myself very terribly. Um, so. Shazam! Um, basically talking about sexuality from the perspective of an asexual person, which is absolutely fascinating. These topics in and of itself, relationships, love, all of these topics are things that I have been thinking about and processing through for myself personally um, for a while now. The way in which I want to define myself in this world if I want to divide myself. Having definitions and labels for me personally is very um, like gratifying and very empowering. I know for a lot of people it isn't, but for me personally it really is because being able to have that like mental connection between, okay, this isn't just in my head. This isn't something that I'm just making up. This is something that other people actually have dealt with as well and it has a name. I've gone through a lot of my life not knowing what's going on with me, not having a diagnosis, not having a, a clear idea of what's actually happening. And that moment, that moment when I realized that one, I'm not alone, and two, there is a name for this thing that I'm feeling, whether it's an emotion, whether it's a illness, whether it's a thought that I'm processing, whatever the case may be, that 
virtually changes everything in my life and changes my perspective on so many things. This book fucked me up in the best way possible. It made me think about so many things that I had thought of, but not in this way before. It made me think about consent in ways that I hadn't thought of before, whether my form of like expressing intimacy is just a projection of the things that are around me or if it's actually something that comes from myself, whether it comes from a place of like wanting intimacy and wanting connection or if it's actually like sexual attraction <laughs> because those are two different things. And it just, it just blew my mind. I honestly need to read this about like two or three more times. And then I think I'm going to make a separate video talking about it because it, it just, like I said, it rocked my world. And I think that everybody needs to read it. If you're going to read any of these books, you need to read this one because it was absolutely amazing. So the next book that I read was a mystery book and that was Arsenic and Adobo by Mia P. Manansala. This is the first book in the Tita's Rosie, Tita Rosie's Kitchen Mystery. Okay, so it does say the first book in a new culinary cozy series full of sharp humor and delectable dishes. The descriptions of food. Oh, it just sounded so good. It made me so hungry. This is following our main character named Lila, and she has moved back into town to help with her family's restaurant. Her ex-boyfriend ends up coming in and he ends up dying in the restaurant and it gets blamed on Lila. And so basically the entirety of the book is her trying to kind of prove that she is innocent and figure out who killed her ex-boyfriend. I enjoyed this. I'm actually very proud of myself because I read it within like the span of 24 hours um, because I needed to return it to the library. It wasn't like my most favorite thing in the entire world. There were definitely parts of the plot that I found very predictable and that I did predict at the end. Um, but there were some things that still had me on my toes. All right, the next book that I read was by Mariko Tamaki. Um, and this is Laura Dean Keeps Breaking Up With Me. This is a graphic novel and I read this very quickly, obviously. 3.5 stars, but honestly, if I was going to be very honest, I would knock it down to a three because I didn't really enjoy this, to be perfectly honest. And this is a queer book following a main character who I cannot remember the name of right now. And basically she's in a relationship that is very toxic, very unhealthy. And uh, the girl essentially keeps breaking up with her. And not just breaking up with her, she's like cheating on her like repeatedly. The main character kind of goes on this journey of like realizing her self-worth and realizing how valuable her relationships um, and friendships around her are. Um, and so I liked that aspect of it. I obviously loved the representation. The artwork was really beautiful, um, but it was just kind of frustrating. All right, the next book that I read was Everything I Never Told You by Celeste Ng. I had heard about this author, of course, from Little Fires Everywhere. I was going to either read that one or everything I never told you, but this one intrigued me a lot more. Um, basically the first sentence in the book, I believe, is Lydia is dead. And if that doesn't pull you in, I'm not sure what will. I love stories about family drama and turmoil that they go through and why people make the decisions that they do. And I just love contemporary um, familial type of stories. Um, so basically this is following a Chinese American family who have recently found out that their daughter is dead. And so this entire book is basically exploring their relationship with their daughter, their relationships with each other, their relationships with themselves, and how they basically got to that point of her da their daughter dying. And also kind of uncovering the mystery of how she died, why she died. It was very sad, it was very dark, and it was hard to read at times because so much of the things that they were dealing with could have been solved if they went to therapy. <laughs> and not even that, if they just like communicated and spoke honestly with each other and told each other how they were feeling and felt safe to be able to do that, you know, that's not how a lot of families work. And so, it was very realistic in that way, 
but it was also very heartbreaking. It was definitely following them getting to the point of how their family kind of deteriorated, but also the like rebuilding of their family as well um, and how they all kind of processed grief very differently. I thought that it was exquisite. I thought that it was really beautiful. I give this 4.75 stars. Okay, the next book that I read was The Kiss Quotient by Helen Huang. I gave this one 3.75 stars. So The Kiss Quotient is following our main character whose name is Stella Lane. Stella Lane is very focused on her career. So Stella Lane is very inexperienced in terms of relationships and she's very, very honest about that. She has Asperger's and so that definitely affects um, her ability to, you know, socially interact with people and stuff. I found that to be a very interesting aspect of the character and her interaction with the other character because this girl decides that the best course of action would be to hire an escort because she's loaded. That she's just like, I'm gonna pay an escort to teach me how to do all the things that I need to do. When I tell you that when I started reading this book, I had to side eye some of you hoes that have recommended this book and said that it is absolutely amazing so that everyone should read it. I see you and I am you. I didn't realize how fucking nasty other people are. I thought it was just me. Um, glad to know that it's not because this book basically i mean we know what the story is but i didn't realize that it was gonna dive right in what can i say i thoroughly enjoyed it it was basically it was basically like 80 percent smut <laughs> and the rest was like some other stuff that was happening that was irrelevant that i didn't really care about the male escort main character was just oh so Fine. <laughs> so fine. <laughs> oh my god, why am I crying? Just like a beautiful gift from the Lord. I'd read it again. There were some things that I didn't enjoy about it, some things that were definitely cringe-worthy, but um, overall, I'd read it again. So these last two books were very random, but they are by an Asian author, and I just kind of wanted something light. So I started listening to All the Boys I Love Before on audiobook by Jenny Han, and I listened to the first two books, and I thoroughly enjoyed every fucking second of it. It was so good. So I gave the first one 5 out of 5, and I gave the second one 4.5, um, just because there was like some slut shaming and stuff throughout the second one that made me uncomfy, and I just wasn't a fan of that. But um, I just love Laura Jean. It's basically following this girl named Laura Jean and she has written these letters to five boys that she was in love with. She finds out that these letters were sent to all of these boys. And so she's like, what the fuck? What do I do? And I just love Laura Jean as a character. She's so like, she's like a cinnamon roll. <gasps> she's like a cinnamon roll, which is like perfect because she loves baking and stuff. I don't remember reading these when I was younger. I do remember reading The Summer I Turned Pretty, that series, um, and I didn't realize that it was written by the same author. I do remember watching the first movie, the Netflix movie, um, and I really enjoyed it. I just didn't end up watching the rest of them for whatever reason, um, but I have been watching them. I watched the first two um, in the last two days, and I did really enjoy them, but honestly, I really liked the books more. I think it was a perfect way to end off the month. I am obviously very happy with all of the books that I got to this month. I read a lot of really good books from a lot of really amazing Asian authors. I'm so excited about this month and I hope you are as well. I hope you are doing amazingly. I am losing my voice. Pretty much it. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're staying safe and I hope you're finding joy in whatever way it is that you can. I love you.